Hey everybody, and welcome to Barnes Takeout. My name is Martha Lucy, and I'm Deputy Director for Research, Interpretation, and Education at the Barnes. And today we're gonna to be looking at a painting by Henri Matisse called Studio with Goldfish. And I wanna show you where it hangs in the Barnes collection. There it is in room 19, which is upstairs. And um, you can see how big this painting is compared to everything that surrounds it. Matisse made this in the spring of 1912, um, right after he got back from his first trip to Morocco. And so what are we seeing here? This is his studio. He was living at the time in a suburb of Paris called Ici Les Moulineaux, and he had a villa there, and there was a garden uh, next to the uh, that was part of the villa, and in the garden was a studio where he worked. And so that's what we're looking at here. And you can see this is an open door to the outside, and that is just a little glimpse of the garden there. Um, I'll just give you a little tour of the studio. So over here, you see his easel. Um, behind that, this thing here, this yellowish thing, is a screen that a model would have gotten changed behind before posing or after posing. And there's a robe for the model hanging over it. There are paintings on the wall that are Matisse's own paintings. Um, and he frequently did this. He included his own work in his, in his paintings um, over and over again. On the table are several objects um, that he would have used um, probably when painting a still life. So some flowers and a bowl with goldfish. And this, which is also a work by Matisse, something he had made about six years earlier. Um, it was a bronze sculpture that he made in 1906. So something that's interesting to think about when and you're looking at paintings by Matisse where he's including works uh, that he had already made is the way that he transforms those works when he kind of repaints them. Um, and it's, it's especially striking with this, with the sculpture because the bronze is, um, the bronze sculpture is bronze in color. And here he sort of does away with that and paints the sculpture in this kind of pinkish tone. And he also does all of these kind of abstractions to the, to the figure, to the figure's limbs. Um, and I'll show you a close up of this in a minute, but you can see how he kind of obliterates the feet here. In the actual sculpture, those feet are, are perfectly present. Um, and he also, he does the same to the hand over here. So this was, you know, there was a long tradition um, of artists painting their own studio. A lot of times an artist would include himself or herself in the painting of the studio. Matisse has not done that, but his presence is obviously still very much felt here, especially through his inclusion of his own works. Um, now there's a, a lot going on in this painting. There's a, first of all, a very interesting relationship between the objects, um, the, the objects that are tangible in the painting and the things in the painting that are intangible. Um, and I'm talking about the space. So all of these things like the table, the easel, um, the paintings, even the, 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 uh, view into the outside, these things are all kind of lit up and easy to see and sort of well-defined, well-articulated, but the rest of the space is filled in with this bluish black, just kind of suffused, saturated with this one color that runs everywhere. And um, it has the effect of kind of, it's almost like it just kind of submerges everything that's, that's within it um, into this into this continuous space so that it becomes hard to differentiate floor from wall. It just looks continuous. I mean, you can, right? There, you can sort of see a line there and you, you can imagine that this is where the floor and the wall meet. Matisse is 
showing you his studio here. He's This is where it all happens. He is showing you something of his life, um, how his art gets made, but he's he's doing a lot more than that. And this is where I think this painting gets super interesting. Um, he is posing, I think, a, a sort of philosophical question in this painting, and he does it in, in others from the time as well. And that question is, what is the relationship between artifice and reality? And I think that he plays with this question and um, kind of asks it in several ways. And he, he makes reality and artifice hard to distinguish from one another. And let me show you what I mean. First of all, I think the most striking example of this happens up here, where you've got um, this long rectangle and the painting hanging above it. Um, now, this long rectangle is meant to represent the view to the outside, but here it really reads more like a painting. Like you look at it and think, I mean, you might, when you first look at this painting, think that it's um, two paintings kind of hanging one on top of each, you know, a long vertical painting here. Um, and he, you know, he really, I think, the the reason that it reads that way is first of all it has the same dimensions as the painting hanging above it um, it's sort of lit up the same way that the painting hanging above it is lit up but also there's no if there there's not that light that kind of pours into the room and that lights up sort of you know the floor around it the way that you would expect if this were um, a view to the outside. There's also, you know, in this in this kind of play between reality and artifice, it happens here as well with this. You've got cut flowers, so a sort of example. You know, these are real flowers, but um, there's there's artifice in the fact that they are now cut and put into a vase versus the sort of real nature outside. And then you've also got um, the the play between the woman who is not present here, the model, but she is alluded to through this robe. So the actual model and the painting of a model or the, the sculpture of a model. So he does this over and over again. The goldfish theme is something that be, that Matisse becomes really interested in around this time. He paints goldfish over and over again. and. Um, you know, I think on the one hand, it allowed him to do interesting things with with color. Um, the you know he he you can tell that he is loving the 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 orange against the blue here. Um, but more than that, he had become interested in goldfish when he went to Morocco because um, he had seen that goldfish were something of like a kind of object of contemplation in that culture. And so he includes them over and over um, in his in his paintings um, going forward after 1912. There are so that's one of the kind of traces of Morocco in this work. Another one is up here. This is a it's um, we know specifically what this painting is. It's a portrait of a woman that he painted while he was in Morocco. Um, and then there's also just the general contrast between light and dark. You can kind of imagine how that's something that he sort of visually took away from, um, from Morocco. Now, I love looking, zooming in on these paintings and looking closely um, and to see that when you get up for, from a distance, these the space, that bluish blackish space looks very, it looks kind of flat. Um, but when you get up close, you see that there's actually a lot going on with the brushwork. Um, it has a certain kind of texture to it almost. And then going over here to the still life, um, just look more closely at what he does to the to the figure here and how kind of messy the the paint is and how he's just really just kind of working 
um, this area of the painting and kind of, um, you know, just just dragging that that cream colored paint like over the, the the shape of the feet and kind of just just obliterating it. And then over here, you know, same with the arm. And then over here, you have these really interesting moments where he um, he paints the rim of this dish here, but then the blue from the fishbowl kind of gets in between there. So it doesn't really make sense. And he does these things on purpose. You know, there, there are these kind of deliberate ambiguities or things that don't quite make sense. And he's, he's playing. Um, another thing that strikes me um, as a sort of play is, is this here, this blue, this slice of blue. What is that, that blue triangle? Um, maybe it is meant to as to sort of represent light that's coming in um, because in the sculpture there was a space here between the body and and the base so light would have been coming through here and maybe he's just representing that light by a block of blue and then finally over here it, um, looking closely at the fish i like to to look at it and see the way you can see something about the way that he painted. So what I mean is that um, it looks like he painted the fish first and then surrounded them with the blue. You can see that the blue strokes go over the orange strokes here, 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 except for in this area. Um, it looks like he, he painted the fish, filled in the blue around it. See, see what I mean? And then, but then decided he wanted to make this tail, you know, give it more of a tail, and so then painted that. Something that many people have observed about this painting, another sort of interesting, I don't know, sort of conceptual thing about it, is the combination of objects on the table. Because what you have here are the traditional elements of the traditional subject of the nude in a landscape, the nude in a landscape painting, um, which was a which was a subject that Matisse himself painted, especially like in his famous Le Bonheur de Vivre, which is at the barns. So you've got the nude, you've got this kind of representing, you know, standing in for the landscape. And then you've got fish that kind of also and water that represent, um, you know, water that might have been in one of these landscapes. So many of them were, were bathing scenes. Um, so in a way, he's kind of making this here into a, a painting. Um, and even the way that this figure is facing out towards us, it's like she is she is participating in this paint in 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 the in this painting at this moment. And the fact that they're all kind of bounded by this square table, which has the shape of a canvas. Now, possibly I'm overreading it, but these are the things that I like to think about. Um, so that wraps up our Barnes Takeout for today. Um, subscribe to our channel so that you can get more daily servings of art. And um, please feel free to leave a comment. We love hearing from you. And thanks very much for watching. Bye-bye. I'm Tom Collins, Neubauer Family Executive Director of the Barnes Foundation. I hope you enjoyed Barnes Takeout. Subscribe and make sure your post notifications are on to get daily servings of art. Thanks for watching and for your support of the Barnes Foundation.